next guest is the lead singer for a very popular group called Duran Duran. He is also one of the classiest names in all of show business. Please welcome Simon Le Bon. Nice to meet you. Thank you for being here. Have a seat. I think it belongs to you. Have words. Oh my God. Yes, a little bait. Ooh, heavens. <laughs> Thank you very much. How you doing? Not bad. How are you? Uh, well, <laughs> I've been better, all things considered. But nice to see you. <laughs> uh, and I was. Uh, we were talking about you this afternoon. You, what's the matter? Hmm? Nothing. You. Uh, you're the favorite. A musical group of uh, uh, Princess Diana. Well, that's been quoted. I don't know if it's true. Not after the show. Have you? Not after the show that she saw us play. Actually, where did she see you guys? Well, she we played a show in London for the Prince's Trust, and um, somebody knocked the bass guitar out of tune, and it was tuned wrongly. And, and we played an abominable version of a song of ours called "Save a Prayer," totally mm -hmm. out of key. Mm. And did she comment upon that at all? No, she just left. Yeah. <laughs> just left. Uh, <laughs> have you ever met the woman? Yeah, we've met a couple of times. She, she sort of. <clears throat> She's, they're, they're a really good couple, actually. I mean, they do a very good job. I mean, if you can imagine having to meet hundreds and thousands of people every year mm -hmm. and trying to find something to talk about in, like, 30 seconds. Yeah. Um, what they do is they do their homework on you and find out what to talk about. What do they talk to you about? Um, well, sex and drugs, that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, what did they talk about? <laughs> um, well, I can't repeat it, actually. It's sort of under the Official Secrets Act. <laughs> really? Come on. <laughs> Next question, please. Uh, but now, give me a hint as to what she's talked about. Oh, we talked about music and, um, you know, Charlie and her and how tall she was and things like that. Uh huh. Yeah, well, I can see why you'd want that secret. <laughs> uh, but a nice couple and uh, seem pretty friendly. Yeah, right, I, think, I think they'll get on with each other quite well. Yeah. All right, well, that's couple. nice. Uh, and you, you're also uh, sailing. You're leaving for a, a race halfway around the world. Yeah, I'm going to be doing um, the second two, the last two legs of the Whitbread Round the World race, which mm -hmm. is um, well, well, a race what, what around kind of, the world. What kind of craft are we talking it's about? It's a 77-foot racing maxi, yeah. and we're there. This to is win. a sailboat. That's right. Yeah. yeah, we're there to win the race, and good luck. Thank and, you very much. And what do you do on the boat? <laughs> Me, I'll be. Doing... <laughs> He's really slow tonight, isn't he? <laughs> I'm, I'm doing. I'm going to be doing the um, the washing up and things like that. You know. Really? Have you you been sailing long? I've been washing up for a lot longer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you you remember the crew? Yeah. I'll yeah. Be, I think what we'll do is rotation. Really, everybody does a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Keep, yeah. Keep, oh, you, you can't pull on the same piece of rope for a month on end. It gets really boring. And how long will you actually be at sea? Um, Thirty-five days. Oh heavens. Thirty-three if we're going really fast. Yeah. Is uh, <laughs> will this be the longest time you've been at uh, out? As Absolutely, they say. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Now you, do you do a lot of this? I've been sailing on and off since I was about nine years old, actually. A local vicar took me to um, the Norfolk Broads on a holiday, and I'd got into boats there, and I've been doing it ever since. But this is really the big one. I mean, this is the mm -hmm. biggest race you can get in sailing. I mean, yeah. It's huge. Yeah. It's the biggest racing track in the world. You know? What did you say, Nor Norfolk Broads? Norfolk Broads. What, what does that mean, Norfolk it's Broads? Bits of water. Broads being broads bits as in water, like a strait yeah. or something? Mm, they're just guys who call the broads, like you call it the Straits of Magellan, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh... Let me ask you about a, uh, uh, a nickname that the people in the, the group have for you. Does this ring a bell? Lardo? I've heard it. I've read, actually, um, in, uh, in Rolling Stone magazine that was quoted. Yeah, it's an absolute load of old tosh. Now, why do they English for crap. Oh. Nonsense. Nonsense? <laughs> so absolutely. Nobody called you that. <clears throat> no, that was absolutely... Um, a complete fabrication. Fabrication, yeah. 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 Uh, I did ask the group about it actually. I said, hey, "Come on, guys, you've got to do me a favour. You've been calling this with this behind my back." They said, "No." Yeah. I did believe them actually. Lardo. Um, doesn't ring a bell. It doesn't. I don't think it uh, yeah. suits me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, what about the what about the group breaking up? As long as we're talking about rumours, any truth to that? Well, I, I mean, obviously not. I mean, it's it's my bread and butter. I'm, I think if we were going to break up, we would have definitely made. Um, a statement about it, you know, we would have yeah, said, some, some would have sort of an official, yeah, this is the up. end. And I mean, yeah. all this speculation, I mean, it's, uh, I, th I find it very boring, very tedious, actually. Yeah, so, but you you will one day get back together, You're, everybody seems to be now be doing other things, but you'll yeah. eventually come back. Yeah, well, I mean, they've been doing the power station, they're doing very well with it. Yeah. <clears throat> and Nick and myself and Roger, we're doing, um, we've got a project, uh, we've got an album called So Red the Rose, which is going to be released in September, I've got to get this up really quickly. Um, the, the band's called Arcadia. Please buy a copy. You. 
No, we can cancel it, Blake. Now, now what was, uh, uh, tell me a little bit about Live Aid. I know that you probably could talk all day about that, but what was that experience like for you? Well, it was, um, I was very proud to be involved in it. That's, that was the first thing I felt. And then suddenly I realized what we were actually doing. Um, not just raising money for people who are starving. I mean, that was obviously the prime objective, was to actually save people's lives. But actually making young people aware of their responsibility and their potency in world affairs yeah. today, and actually making the, you know, the people who are in power aware of the potency and strength of feeling, and actually what can be physically done for people who are yeah. dying yeah. by people who believe in what they're doing. Yeah. And it was, it was good to be part of that. Yeah, very nice experience. Yeah. Overwhelming. <laughs> All right. Actually, um, can, I, can, I say, can I carry on? Um, I would just carry on with that because um, because it's it's one it's one thing it's one thing to sort of put your hand in your pocket and give a dollar off to Live Aid when all the pop groups are on TV and there's all that publicity, but it is a situation which is still going on. There are still people starving, and that money doesn't last for very long at all. And if any real solution is to be made to that problem, people really do have to keep on being very aware of the problem and actually giving money all the time. Yeah. It's, a, it's a pragmatic solution to a situation. It's not charity, it's a fact. You don't let these people starve because they're the same as you are. Yeah. But it's certainly a good way to begin getting the message out. Yeah. Oh, okay. Nice to meet you. Thank good you good luck in the race. Thank you very much, Simon. We'll be right back, folks, with Rita Rudner.